<laughs> All right, you guys ready for Malta or what? Yeah. yeah, let's go to Malta. Let's go. So Malta, I really didn't know anything about it, other than it's an island in the Mediterranean. That's kind of the extent of my knowledge. Did you guys know anything about it? Uh, that's about it. At least that I remember. I mean, I knew a little basics, you know, like very similar to like Sicilian, Sicily in a lot of ways, right. like taken over. But um, yeah, I don't really know too much. Like they speak English. Right? Yeah. So it's kind of crazy. So I forget what the old joke is, like the neighborhood bike that everyone's ridden. <laughs> but Malta's that is, is a country. And it's kind of like it, the, as an analogy, because literally every single nation has taken over this place. And it's kind of like if you took a like an Italian person and rode raised them the in the neighborhood. Yeah, and <laughs> rode them. Now, if, if you took them and put them in the Middle East and raised them, and then they married an an English person, so okay. it's Italian, Arabic, or Northern African and English, kind of all at the same time, mixed with every other country like that's Greek, ever invaded. Greek too. I'm just yeah. Mediterranean people. Greek. Are, yeah. Spanish, French, kind of everybody's been there at some point in time. We're talking about whores, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. No, Malta's not a whore. They're, <laughs> they didn't necessarily want any of this. But at the same time, look, they became one of the most unique countries. I think this might be the, one of the most unique and diverse countries that we've gone to as far as All right. I'm excited. how they became a country. It's not maybe at the Suriname level as far as the diversity, but everyone's kind of background from the... You're a native Malta, and you got a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going in there. So let's get into the rundown. So the capital is Valletta. It's pretty small. So it's not again. We're not going to Nauru here. This isn't like Monaco, but it's it's still pretty small. But it's basically three islands. It's the tenth smallest in the world. So 316 kilometers or 122 square miles. But basically, the size when you put all that the three islands together, it's I don't know, maybe about the size of like a Medium-sized city, medium-sized U.S. city, we'll say. All right. So not tiny, but still pretty tiny for a country. Comparing it to a size, about the size of one-tenth of Rhode Island, we'll say, or not the metro area, but the actual city size of like a medium U.S. city. So you could fit Malta in Austin or, you know, Houston or something. The but, whole country? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the whole country, but maybe, I don't know, Sheboygan? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, it's probably bigger than Sheboygan, but some some run of the mill city, we'll say. Damn. <laughs> so the population, it's about five hundred and twenty thousand. So that's, that's pretty awesome. populated. Yeah. yeah. So it's still small. I mean, that's small. It, it's it's small, but for the size, it's one of the most densely populated in the world, and I think it's the most densely populated in Europe. So yeah, I mean that makes sense. Beating out Monaco and some of those other ones. Beat out the Netherlands and density? Yeah. Okay. Because it's so small. It, and it's really, it's these three islands, but pretty much everyone lives on one main island and kind of near the capital. But, but yeah, it's, it's, it's dense. And they speak Maltese, which is their own language, and English. But English is, I think, basically everybody speaks English. That's but true. Maltese is a weird language. And because they've been conquered by so many people, it's, I guess it's the, it's the only uh, Semitic language, which is like Arabic or Hebrew, but it's the only one of those language families that uses a Roman alphabet. So the words are of, let's just say like Arabic descent, but they write it all out in, in like basically English in English. Right. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Interesting. Mm. I think I, I remember hearing that. So it's that's really pretty crazy. And then just the makeup of the language. So it's kind of weird, too, because it it's not just it's a Semitic language technically, but a third of the words are Arabic, half are about Sicilian, Italian, and then the rest are English and French. Hmm. So it's a mixture of a language that's, I don't know. I feel like most languages, they just descend from some point that you can kind of trace, and this is kind of just... I don't know. So is it almost like slang, or is it like like maybe, say, like the evolution of where English... Spanish and even you could say French are mixing down, say in the Caribbean and Florida, where it's no. So I think it's its own language, like patois or something. Like I mean, is it the result of that? And, and that's one of those weird things too with languages where they derive at some point, and then at some some point, someone just says, "Okay, this is its own language." Right, right. So it's 
It's like that. I don't think it's, it's not like a dialect, but it's, it's considered its own, own language, Maltese. Okay. So yeah, it's kind of crazy though, that it's, you can just trace all those words. Have you spoke all three or let's say four of those languages? I mean, you could probably understand everything, but not, I don't right, know, right. but there probably is a lot of slang and mixed words and whatever the hell else is in there. But, um, but yeah, it's just kind of crazy that they have their own language. Even I just always thought they spoke English or Italian or Arabic. Just pick one. Why do you have to combine them all? <laughs> Cause that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If they're, get, if they're getting invaded or, you know, whatever overtaken by right. many, many different languages or nations with different languages, that makes sense. But you would think for just as such a small country, they would just go, okay, we're speaking this now. It'd be, getting interesting. Rid of this. It'd be interesting to study. What was it called? Is that etymology? I think so. Yeah, it is. It'd be interesting History to study where that came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so yeah, if you're a linguist, you're probably <laughs> like, your ears are perking up for this episode. You're like, woo, these guys, these guys love Send languages. the DVR. It's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Right. The YouTube. Anyway. <laughs> Put, put your screen up to the... Subscribe. Subscribe, yeah, that's yeah. it. You can yeah. really watch it. They're not live. You need to subscribe, okay? <laughs> we need subscribers. <laughs> so they use the euro. So it's a euro cool. country. Okay. And the makeup of the country, it's mostly Maltese. So whatever this mutt of a country is, whatever they are now, they're all kind of have you know some sort of same ethnic background. But then the rest are... So it's mostly Maltese, the rest are British or Italian. So and like a lot is native. Yeah, a lot of them are, are native Maltese, which again, they, you know, it's Poodles. they probably have, you know, if you did a DNA test, they're all probably different, but they all identify as Maltese, we'll say. Cool. So we, we already said physically it's located in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean country, and it's super close to Sicily. It's about 50 miles 50? south of, of Sicily. Oh, damn it. And if, if you were taking a ferry, it, it's about, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hour ferry mm -hmm. ride from Sicily or the lowest point in Sicily, I guess. Is that the only way to access it? I think they have an airport. Do they? Or no, I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they it's do. Like a pretty small piece of land and also have an airport with that much density. I think they do have an airport, but yeah, no, they have to because it's a big tourist destination. But I think a, like a lot of people can access it from Sicily, ferry ride. Yeah. It's also... Not super far from Libya or Tunisia, so you could get there from there probably. But yeah, I think everyone's flying in. Maybe a couple people are taking a ferry ride, but what, the, the smaller country had an airport though. It was like everyone. Oh yeah, the well that was uh, that, that was tu that was Tuvalu. Tuvalu, yeah, which is going to be gone soon. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that. Like they're starting to Australia is letting those people move there. They're what now? Because the sea level's rising. Oh, they're getting them off. And they're having less even drinking water because of that. Oh, yeah. Those, they're, up, so. those countries are messed up, dude. I saw something after the fact because now my YouTube algorithm is just <laughs> all country stuff from doing all this research for you guys. <laughs> You're welcome. And no, and don't take credit. No, it's all <laughs> high. It's like the people. The people. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm taking credit for just relaying all this information. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was. Something about Tuvalu, I think. It, it was one of the, I don't know, one of the Oceania countries that was, it was a newer thing, and it was like, hmm. it's messed up. But yeah, so these guys aren't in that big of a threat. The The physical island, it's real rocky, so it's, it's I don't know. With a lot of those islands being in the middle of the Pacific, they're super flat. Right. This has some elevation, and it's in the Mediterranean, so it's less... I guess uh, less likely for for that anytime soon. But like we said, it's a set of three islands. So there's Malta, which is the main island. Then there's Gozo. Okay. And oh, then Gozo. Comino. I think Comino is really tiny. Gozo's middle size and Malta's basically the main one where everyone lives. Hmm. That's where the capital is. And so they, they have beaches there. It is a destination, like a vacation resort. But I don't think there's a lot of flat, sandy beaches. It's a pretty rocky country, so I know there's yeah. some, but I saw something somewhere where... It's got to be beautiful weather regardless. Yeah, I think the weather's the ideal. I think it does get pretty hot there, but, I mean... It's probably reasonably moderated with yeah. the water, that much water anyways, but yeah, I was yeah. curious how hot it gets there. And so there's no, there's no natural rivers or lakes either. So they do have some, I guess, some underground 
water, but I think the last place we Qatar, we said we can't go whitewater rafting here. You can't go <laughs> inland. I don't know. Canoeing. Yeah. So that's kind of at least a little bit of the physical rocky Mediterranean. Sounds, sounds pretty nice. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So now we got to get into the history and look, we could do probably 10 episodes on the history of this place. Cause everybody's been here. Right. Everybody's come here. So, that bicycle's been rented. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, they're paying for it now? <laughs> paying for the bicycle? You always pay for the bicycle. You pay in one you way or the other. This is a hooker. <laughs> Even the non hooker bicycle, <laughs> you always pay. So, one crazy thing. So, let's go back to early history. And I'm talking early, like super old history. First bicycle ride. The first <laughs> riders of this bicycle. So, we're, we're talking like prehistory, 5,000 BC, 6,000 BC, <laughs> maybe. Like- they don't even know, but they do know that this, there's structures on this island that are a thousand years older than the pyramids. Damn. Oh, shit. So there was something where. Um, How big are the alien skulls they found on the, on the island? <laughs> so they're surprisingly tiny. You'd think. Really? You I think, think they'd be they big. Would, yeah. yeah. I know. Everything with this country, you think it's something and it's not. It's the opposite. <laughs> but a thousand years before the pyramid, which is crazy. So they have the second oldest known to man freestanding structure. I think uh, it's spelt really weird, but Gigantia, Gigantia. That's Gig- sounding familiar. Gigantia. So it's the second oldest site behind Gobekli Tepe, which is in Turkey. But right, this right. is like. Before that, or right after that. Right after that. Interesting. Um, it's not the most impressive thing. No. I don't know. At least some of the structures, there you can tell some cavemen made them. But the interesting thing was they said it was pre-wheel. So they made these things not really knowing what they're doing. So it's, uh, hmm. I don't know. Some old-ass structures, which I never even heard of, but... But why would you need a wheel on a rocky island? You know, you don't. I guess so. <laughs> Maybe you still do. Pulleys. <laughs> no, of course. you still need a wheel for a pulley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, we need a, the pulley is kind of round. Right? Right. And, right. and it's kind of ironic because we're calling them the bicycle and there's no wheel. So that's yeah. even more of a mystery. <laughs> but lots of chains to buy. <laughs> so this is sled. <laughs> so basically this, this pre, I don't know. Well, I don't know what to call them. This uh, prehistoric. Society. No one really knows a lot about them. They just know these structures are there. Maybe this was Atlantis. I don't know. Could be, but... Oh, is this positive as a place to be Atlantis? I don't think so, but I know there was... <laughs> I remember playing Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis in elementary school, and one of the places you went as Indiana Jones it wasn't maybe Malta, but you went to Crete and some of these other right, right, right. Mediterranean islands. Right. So, hey, <laughs> that's a pretty good source. Indiana Jones. So I got to go to Creed to get to Atlantis. <laughs> All right, you take me higher. I got you. So basically for history that we know of, as far as uh, modern history, we'll say, it was colonized by the Phoenicians okay. in 800 BC, which I feel like once we get through all the countries, we got to go back to these old countries. Like you always hear about the Phoenicians, but you don't really know too much about it. a long time since I've heard of the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians. Next, it was the people from Carthage. Carth- mm-hmm. Were they mm-hmm. similar? How far away were those two countries, Carthage and... So British. Carthage was close because Carthage was... Northern Africa. Tunisia, Northern yeah. Africa. Um, well, they took over Rome at, or well, they, Italy at yeah. some point, didn't they? Yeah. They were battling. I mean, they went, yeah, to, yeah. They went into Europe, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, But their country, though. So Carthage was, yeah, like yeah. Libya... Yeah. Tunisia around there. So this was close, but the Phoenicians, yeah, I think, were from like Iraq or I don't know. They were from the Middle East, so not super close, but I know the Phoenicians, they got around a lot. I don't know. You always hear about them popping up in that time frame. But right. so after the Phoenicians, it was Carthage at 500 BC. And then, of course, the Romans beat the cart, the beat Carthage, became Roman for a while. And then it was basically. Roman, Byzantine until 870, and then it was taken over by the Arabs. So that's when we have the first part of their language showing up. It was an Arab country for a couple hundred years, and then in 1091, the Normans took over. 
So now, damn, the Norman invasion was bigger than I thought. I didn't know they just got down there. No, because they went to England, right? Ten ninety one. Yeah, that's like William the Conqueror. So, so they went they went down there. Um, I don't really know too much about the Normans either, but I know they're yeah they're they're Vikings. Weren't they? Well, they were like Vikings who settled in France. Okay. And they're, so they're big. And I think they, then they could grow stuff better and, and they got even stronger. I don't know, maybe not, but something like that. Yeah. Know? Cause that was like the Norman invasion was like essentially the Vikings taking over, but they like launched from France oh, to wow. get to England. Oh, no, so I think that's why like huh. Britannia is actually, Man, maybe I'm wrong. Like yeah. yeah. Something like this. Yeah, look, we're not history. We're not teachers. the history. Boys. We're not Indiana Jones, <laughs> but we would like to be. We're, we're talking about the modern countries now. So all this stuff, you know, whatever. Don't don't quote us on it, but no, I believe it. I, <laughs> I just knew the the Normans were from France, yeah. but it makes sense that they were Vikings who moved to France. No, they were and then, badass Vikings who acted like they were from Fra- France. <laughs> so then the English weren't scared, and then they were like, "Get their world fucked up." <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's a. <laughs> That's an unpleasant surprise. <laughs> <laughs> You're not French at all. You're Vikings. Fuck. <laughs> so, so now the Normans take over. There's the Crusades. I think during the Crusades, it was a big stopping off point. Um, but then really, so up until one of the main things that they're known for is the Siege of Malta. And that's maybe the history thing you were talking about. But the Siege of Malta was... A huge turning point, not just for Malta, but for all of Europe. So basically, everybody was going to the Middle East on these crusades. During the crusades, there was kind of this order that formed. They were called the Knights of St. John's or the Knights Hospitali- Hospitaler, Hospitaler, your- Hospitality Industry. And these guys were basically like an order of knights that were all doctors. So kind of like paladins. They could okay. heal. They could cast, <laughs> yeah, they they could cast heal. healing and <laughs> cure wounds and remove curses. But basically these, once they left the Middle East, you know, all the Europeans who tried to conquer the Middle East or Jerusalem and couldn't do it. These knights, they all settled in Rhodes, like in Greece, Turkey, that whole area. So they had their own island. They were basically like, all right, let's, let's go form our paladin community in Rhodes. Um, but then they got kicked out of Rhodes by the Ottoman Empire. And so this was like 1522. Jesus. They got kicked out of Rhodes by Solomon the Magnificent. Oh, he's, he was a good one. <laughs> and they had no place to go. So they're like, look, we have our community of paladins. What are we What are we doing? Where are we going? And I think it was the king of France, Charles V, said, look, you guys can have Malta. But no one really wanted Malta because it's rocky, wasn't developed. They get granted Malta, so they're... This is their new home. They move, they get kicked out of Rhodes, they go to Malta. But at this point in time, Suleiman the Magnificent, he's trying to take over Western Europe, Western Mediterranean, or yeah, Western. So he wants Malta. And they know that they're like, this guy already kicked us out of Rhodes. He's going to come for Malta. So they start building all these bases and structures, and they basically fortify the island, knowing that it's inevitable that this guy is going to come. Mm-hmm. This brings us to the the siege of Malta. That was just the backstory. So then they have a couple close calls, but the Ottomans can't take it over. And then in 1565, Suleiman the Magnificent's like, we're taking this island over. We need this as a launching point to conquer the rest of the Mediterranean. So he tries, he brings 50,000 soldiers to try to conquer this place, but they've been fortifying it. They've been making bases. They've been building vol- like walls and shit. And so they had about combined, it was like 5,000 soldiers. So it was, you know, some of these knights, paladins, whatever they are, some local OG How many, how many was it that they had defending? 50, so 50, it was 50,000 attacking, uh-huh. 5,000 defending. Nice. That's nuts. It's my kind of odds. <laughs> yeah. And they that was won. Like Wolverine. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Yeah. So th- they withstood like four months of siege, basically h- holding out on these strongholds that they built. And the Ottomans had conquered most of the island. They just couldn't take the main areas. And then eventually they won. Um, it took them four months of holding out before the Spanish arrived, and then they brought reinforcements. And basically they defeated these Ottomans. The Ottomans gave up, left, and that kind of was like they were giving up on... 
even conquering the rest of the Mediterranean. They're just like, all right, we already lost half of our, half of this army at least. So they're, they were defeated. They went back to Ottoman, Ottoman, and uh, yeah, it was a big turning point. So as a result of this, they put their feet up in their sweet, sweet, cushy Ottomans. <laughs> yeah, they were like, we're going back Fuck to that. my Ottoman where I can watch TV, <laughs> kick back. Watch shadows on the wall. <laughs> we didn't have TV. Uh, I, maybe, I think, I think TV was invented. Though. I'm not good with it. <laughs> um, what year are we talking about? So this was 1565. 15, okay. I think TV was 1520. Because <laughs> <laughs> Columbus couldn't get any good channels. That's, yeah. why, he, right, right, right. that's why he came to America. <laughs> um, so this was crazy, though, because the European royalty were all, you know, they had lost all these... Uh, invasions that they tried to do of the Middle East. So they were already kind of, you know, walking with their tail between the legs. And now these Europeans beat the Ottomans. And so they're like, you guys rule. And so basically they got tons of money and gifts and they just got flooded with money from all of Europe. Mm. So everybody's like, you guys, you guys rule. You, you paladins are awesome. <laughs> Here's a bunch of money. So they became insanely wealthy. And they basically invested it back into this island and, made Malta kind of what it is now with all this, all these gifts. So that it, it not only was a big turning point, this siege of Malta for the entire Europe, but it was a huge thing for them. That kind of defined them as a country where before it was just a piece of land that everybody was, you know, conquering, going after, but now they're a rich country um, or, you know, territory, they were still probably... Look at us so now, is what Malta's saying. <laughs> yeah. So they got hooked up. So because of this, the they made the capital Valletta. They built it with all this money. And when you see it now, when you see pictures of Malta, it's... I mean, it looks crazy. It's, I don't know, cathedrals everywhere, monuments oh, really? and shit everywhere. Hmm. So yeah, so they, they reinvested it. And basically they were... I don't know if they were autonomous or just... Under someone's rule, a couple hundred years later, Napoleon tries to invade. He conquers it with little resistance, but basically everybody hates him. It's difficult to manage being an island. And so you learned that from the movie. Yeah. Yeah. This is this was what the new movie was about. Did, yeah. did you did you see it? I haven't I haven't seen it. Oh, okay. no, I haven't seen Have it. you seen it? No. no. Three and a half hours long, dude. <laughs> yeah. You know I what? Can't, I can't. <laughs> they probably don't even mention Malta. Fucking sick of movies being that long. Like, I, can't, I can't commit yeah, myself. Just to make it a show hours. at that point. I don't mind necessarily like watching something that, but being at the movie theater for three and a half hours isn't like, you know, it's, it's, not it's, ideal. it's nice at home. Or yeah. Whatever, yeah, yeah. But anyway, we're stopping. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so Napoleon. Fucking Ridley Scott. He conquered it, but basically. It's always been a sought after piece just because of its geographical location. So they it's a nice bicycle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a, a huffy, dude. And <laughs> dude, huffies are real nice. That's, that's like the top of the line. Hey, if that's all you can get, all right. Yeah, that's true. Stop making fun of the dude with a huffy. <laughs> no, I, I had a huffy and it ruled. Yeah, me too. I thought it was cool as shit. <laughs> okay, maybe it's a uh Schwinn. Schwinn. We'll say. But, <laughs> so basically, the Maltese people turned to England. They were like, we know you hate Napoleon. Come save us. So basically, the English came in, took it over from Napoleon. They never lost it. And it was an English colony till like, I don't know, the 70s when course, everything else. <laughs> English fucking colony, yeah. So that's why now English is still very prevalent. And I don't know. It's just everyone speaks English it's because Europe. it was an English colony for 200 years after Napoleon. Mm. Yeah, so 1964 was maybe when they became independent. It's crazy that, like, between the 60s and 70, like, 60s to 75, how much shit changed in the world. Oh, and yeah. Like, maybe you could even say, like, World War II, but, like, but then nothing, like, and then whatever. And then all these things changed. Yeah. You know, like no. If, if we did country boys in the 60s, there'd be, like, five countries to <laughs> go over. <laughs> <laughs> everything became a country then there, there'd be we, we would have already been done we would have been like well that's everything that's every country um and so then that basically after that i don't really know too much about the modern history because there was so much 
old history, but they became their own thing and we'll say 64, if not sometime in the seventies. And now here they are today. Huh. Kicking ass. Interesting history there. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, but yeah, one the, of the more the, interesting histories of the countries. Oh like, yeah, for sure. This isn't just, that's only a, that's just the little, this is a, this is a little taste. Of, <laughs> wait till we make the six hour country boy movie. The history of <laughs> yeah, this is a multi Alta. history for dummies. class. <laughs> <laughs> So there's there's like definitely more <laughs> there's definitely more modern history. I'm sure a lot's changed in 15, 20 years, but right. look, there was just so much ancient history that right. we couldn't get into it all. Dude, okay? You guys were pre wheel, okay? <laughs> pre wheel history. <laughs> yeah. it took us a minute to get that out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the countries we went to, Sao Tome, maybe it wasn't even inhabited until when when the, the siege happened here. So right, right. look. Tell us about some new history. Maybe maybe there's a new Mayor or something you guys had there. It was you cool. guys got the new dance. <laughs> <laughs> it's cultural. All right. So going into the cultural. So we said there's a lot of monuments and landmarks and cool things there because they got all this money. But there's something like 300 monuments or sites that you can see there. There's 365 churches. So one every day. You go to church every day. Jeez. And- Get all of them. <laughs> ABC, another boring church. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fucking wild. It's like a UNESCO. I mean, I think the whole island's a UNESCO heritage site because everything I mean, like, there shit, I is want significant. Compare, I want a comparison because, like, I wonder how many churches are in the same vicinity here, like, say, in Austin. If, like, Austin was the, you compared it to like a middling city. So, a middling city. Yeah, but how many fucking churches are, can there be? There's, a lot more than you think. But here in Austin, we got bigger churches, so that's all that matters. <laughs> you can have your, you can have 365 true, small too, little but, chapels. Okay, I mean, but I could probably think of it like like five within a mile vicinity of here. Yeah, no, it's it's crazy for a small country where like every other building has got to be a church. Yeah, that's nuts. And so yeah, so when you're there, I mean, there's tons of stuff around. Tons of you like you would need a tour guide to explain everything because everything has to be culturally significant. Um, but then other than that, they're known for a couple things. Maltese dogs. <laughs> I figured that's that a big, was coming. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big thing. Maltese poodles. Maltese lace, I guess, is a... Lace? Like embroidery. I, I never even okay. put it together that the Maltese falcon was from Malta. Yeah, so you falcons. Know, and, that, and, and let's clear this up. You know, the Maltese falcon was unique because there was just one of it. You know, It was like that, like... It, I don't even know what a. I just assumed it was, just it was a, a statue. Breed. It was just a statue. No, it was a statue in the movie. What what movie was it? The movie is called The Maltese oh, Falcon. Okay. Oh, it's pretty. <laughs> I've just known the term Maltese Falcon, but I just assumed it was like a. I don't know the species term, of Falcon. Falcon. It's just I just heard it. Rare. I don't know. Right? I don't know what it was. Yeah. yeah. But speak, speaking well, of that, unique. I'm sorry. The difference between unique and rare is there's one of things that are unique. So it's one of one. Mm-hmm. Rare is just there's not a lot. So right. Like, whenever someone says. It's very unique. It's like nothing can be very unique if it's one of one. Right, right. Yeah. Like, oh, it's very, very unique. No, it's one of one. There's one Mona Lisa that we know, or something like that. Right. It's unique because there's one. Okay. So just people misuse it all the time. Like, it's very unique. Like, oh, you need it's good rare. point. Yeah, I guess I never knew no, that. Shit on everybody I know for that shit one. On <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. No, that does not mean unique. <laughs> it's literally Tom unique. Fuck. That's rare. You're two strikes Bitch. right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally not unique. <laughs> Don't use that. Stop word. using literally. <laughs> use figuratively, hyperbole, exaggerationally. <laughs> um, so going back to the Falcon, though, when these knights first took over, I guess they were kind of like a, a territory of France and their payment to the, the king of France in order for them to have this piece of land was a falcon a year. So they had to give a, a falcon, falcon, one falcon every year, which that got me thinking for Country Boy Island. We got to have falcons. Mm, we got to have falcons. Well, <laughs> if, we could, if we could find a place where we could just get one falcon a year, we could scrounge up a couple falcons and have our own territory. So wait, were well, these... we want enough falcons to fill up a plane, like fucking <laughs> yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio. No, oh. no, no. I should have sent it to you too. There is some like uh, Saudi Arabian royalty who 
had 80 Falcons on a plane. He bought plane seats for each individual Falcon. Like a, a filled up not a, a private jet, like a, a plane. commuter plane <laughs> <laughs> of Falcons. Nice. They'll have blinders on so that they wouldn't freak out during the plane ride. That's quite the flex. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll take all crazy. the seats for my birds. Yeah, <laughs> We're taking you birds higher than you've ever been yeah. before. I like how just a blinder, it's like, oh, well, the engine and the pressure, <laughs> the none of that pressure matters. pressure the air, right? no. <laughs> well, nah, pressure's just, reasonable. Because they close their eyes. You know, oh, the yeah. Answer, That's how many Falcons we're having for Country so Boys. Island, are they right? are they actual Falcons or real Falcons? Are Falcon statues or are they actual Falcons? No, so whatever? in this case, they just had to give a real Falcon as their form of rent. But nice. I don't, I don't, my complex took that. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Probably. If we had our own island and we just had to pay some king a Falcon a year, <laughs> all right. I think we could manage that what, for sure. What would be the equivalent of a Falcon payment today? <laughs> I, I don't think Falcons have inflated too much. Well, I mean, we did just talk about Qatar last Falcon, episode yeah. where falconry was a big thing there. There's a whole market That's of Falcons. True. But yeah, so definitely way more cultural stuff. I, I put some stuff in the activities, but just as far as cultural significance of things, it's everywhere. You're walking around, you're like, everything is uh, culturally cool. <laughs> So food and drink looks pretty good. Their national dish is pastizzi, mm. which is ricotta and peas in a, I think it's like a anything with cheese, but fried vessel, I guess. <laughs> um, Imcaret is a date pastry that they're known for. All right. Stufat talfanek. Want to take a guess? Not a stuffed... <laughs> Fish? I have no yeah, idea. Braised rabbit. Close. <laughs> nice. I'm very nice. good. <laughs> uh, lots of seafood, of course. And then they're known for this Maltese ice cream, mm. which I think it's like they use condensed milk or I don't know. It's something where it's kind of richer. Slightly different. Ice Definitely give me guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not. Let's go. <laughs> so, yeah. So food looks good, but kind of a mix of, you know, Mediterranean, Italian, Luckily, they didn't continue the English traditions, maybe other than the peas on that uh, pastizzi, <laughs> but yeah, food looks good. Middle Eastern, Mediterranean, Italian. So when you're here, plenty to see and do. I mean, it's a small island, but I feel like you could spend a lot of time on this island just because there's so much stuff around. Um, like we said, tons of churches, one for each day of the year. You were joking or serious? No, no. There's oh, literally wow. That's impressive. 365, if not more. I kept s seeing 365. I refuse to believe there's exactly that amount. Right. But yeah. you, there's literally more than a church for every day. Maybe that's a thing now. They had this big arch. So it was a natural formation that jutted out from the sea and kind of connected. But this archway where waves would pass by, mm. it was called the Azure Window Arch. And it just collapsed, 2017. Oh, so wow. can't see that anymore. But that was kind of their big landmark. Or if you'd see, you know, come to Malta, mm. it would be this Azure Picture window. That. Yeah. And it fell into the ocean. So it goes. <laughs> so if you want if you're watching something, you're like, oh, I want to go see that Azure window. Too bad. That's well. So snorkeling, diving. You hate this. So. It's a big hot spot. <laughs> So we were talking earlier, you can't whitewater rafts, and you said, is there snorkeling? Not only is there snorkeling, but this is a prime snorkeling location in Europe. It's probably the best in Europe if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna go snorkeling. So love what we're talking about snorkeling, not scuba diving. Like snorkeling, if you want to stay on the surface. S snorkeling, scuba diving, same thing. I mean both. It's oh, both. Okay, okay. I, I had snorkeling slash scuba diving. Okay. So uh yeah. <laughs> Which, big theme of the show. Snorkeling? Scuba diving. Oh. <laughs> it comes up. It comes, it up. comes up every it comes episode. Up every episode. <laughs> yes. We could if be not, the, the scuba boys if we wanted to. <laughs> not one of us has a license. <laughs> <laughs> we like talking about it and living through those We could be the Muay Thai boys and go take kickboxing <laughs> class. It would be kind of cool. Yeah. Who's doing that? Nobody. <laughs> but th there's so much stuff. Honestly, you could go all around here. You could see, I mean, drive around and just see crazy old churches. There's catacombs. 
There's that old structure, the one that's hard to say. <laughs> but one thing that's kind of cool here, and this isn't this is new Malta. This isn't some old ancient stuff. You know, we're not going to bore you with oh the St. John's Cathedral or Basilica of Our Lady of Mount Mount Camel. We don't talk about that shit. <laughs> it's probably very nice and probably something you're going to go see. Country but boys, they fuck that. one one modern attraction they have is the Popeye Village. So it's a film set from the 1980s that was converted to a Popeye themed amusement park, and it's still there. Sailor Man. And it's yeah, there's Popeye, Popeye, Popeye the Sailor, Sailor Man. Man? Nice. Does Popeye have um, Maltese roots? Is that no? Yeah. So I they think like him. they just they filmed just it there. It. <laughs> and I don't even know. I, it, I think this was in the 80s, but they basically built this whole set of Popeye's Village. It was kind of there for a while, and then they're like, oh, we can turn it into an amusement park. So it's a super low rent, kind of in the middle of nowhere, Popeye-themed amusement park. Interesting. I'm I looking actually, this up. I think we could go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it sounds, sounds, sounds awesome. cool, to be honest. sounds pretty cool. <laughs> and it's probably something like after an hour, you're already bored of it. But just going to, and you're also in Malta, so you're in you know, beautiful location, hanging out in Popeye's Tavern or whatever. <laughs> but I mean, it looks like, like a like a petting zoo type thing. It's like this isn't like this is like a, a roadside attraction, basically. Right, right. Popeye's Village. Popeye was a comic strip back before it was a cartoon or anything. I think it started as a comic strip, and then you know blew up because it was so so such a cool idea. But <laughs> that got me thinking. Did you guys ever read comic strips? Or I remember looking at it a lot. Did you ever have a favorite comic strip? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Marmaduke, Archie. I mean, like uh, Prince Valiant was okay because my grandpa liked it, you know. But it was like sometimes it was rough, not because they weren't good, because it was three blocks. Yeah, like in the newspaper, so like you had to read the newspaper every day. And one time I had this Spider-Man comic, and it was blank. But then every day's newspaper articles, you would cut them out, or um, every comic strip, you'd cut out the little Spider-Man two or three blocks. And put that you'd like glue that or tape it into the oh, that's cool. comic that's cool. book and tell cool the whole story. So that yeah. kind of got it like every day. I was like, but then I'd miss a day. I was like, fuck. Yeah. You know, just <laughs> so, so it was Spider Man funnies or whatever. Like the three. <laughs> no, it was just like the Spider Man. It wasn't really funnies, but it was in the comics. Right. You know? right. It wasn't like okay. Know, I, I do remember like, Spider Man. Yeah. Comic. It was just a little black and white. You know. Yeah. Whatever. And maybe in color on Sunday. You know, the comics would all be in color, at least in the Detroit Free Press. Or whatever, yeah. So. Hmm. I remember uh, Beetle Bailey. Not I guess a military but, one, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only one my dad let me read. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I remember Red that Beetle, being put, one. Put it away. <laughs> I feel like Garfield, though, at least as a kid, that yeah, was the only Garfield. one that I kind of got. Because some of them, like Archie and stuff. Some like, of them. Yeah, Archie didn't get. I feel like. A lot of comics Archie were kind of... was from the 50s. Okay, The, you had to, the work was, one was in there, right? The, um, oh, Dilbert? Dilbert. Dilbert. Yeah, 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 but I didn't really get that either other than... Yeah. I mean, it seemed very basic and Snarky. you kind of thought like... like <laughs> yeah, he was, was kind right, of... I'm glad, kind so, of just I'm thought glad Dilbert was dad my... did it work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like, just like, oh, he goes to an office. This must be his <laughs> life. Uh, he deals with a guy like Dilbert or he <laughs> yeah, is exactly. Dilbert. Yeah. <laughs> One of the two. Yeah, are you Dilbert or are you... <laughs> I hope my dad's not Dilbert. <laughs> I mean, but the best, the best ones... I don't know if I, you're, I'm going to jump the... I'll let you finish. So. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> are we just talking about... Okay, I don't know if you're asking a question, but uh, the best, the best, some of the best comic strips were... Far side and Calvin and Hobbes. Like I think it's hard yeah, to hold. Yeah, it's Calvin hard to and hold. Hobbes. Like they hold up. You know, I think you can go back and read them. And like Dilbert's tech comments don't really hold up that well. <laughs> yeah. You know, of like fax machine <laughs> etiquette in 1992 or some shit. Right. So. Yeah, a, a lot of those comics too were for, you know, like the Dilberts in real life. Or just right. Like like, <laughs> like you never laugh that hard at a comic. It's kind of just. You know, well, then I guess there was controversy with the Dilbert dude where he was like. Oh yeah, shit. didn't I he? Didn't really care too much about it. But I remember mm. reading, so I couldn't tell you specifics. But yeah, yeah, leave that in the comments. What this happened to Dilbert <laughs> <laughs> or the Dilbert creator? I can't remember. His he name. got canceled. Yeah, Scott yeah. Some, Scott something something like shit. I can't remember his name. Yeah, I don't know. I never knew it. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just remember him being news. No, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. It wasn't yeah. Kind of riff yeah. On Wait, you didn't read that part as a kid who the author was? Well, I mean, I did know who some were. Like, no, I mean, he was yeah, all awesome. Larson did Farside. Yeah, you know, no, Farside. Watterson did, you know, Bill Watterson did Kelvin okay. Hobbs. So, like, to me, that's like. Really yeah, those two were definitely, I feel like, 
on the better and I mean far side I think it was kind of its own thing and when that came out too it was like oh a, I don't know funny com- or a more relevant comic yeah. or- I feel like it was kind of the um family guy of its te- like something like that you know just kind of like made fun of the other ones almost like they would make fun of Garfield yeah you know? but actually like he would show like and even like knock on the fourth wall of like right I, like I remember some of that. So. I, didn't, I don't I mean I didn't read the comics all that much I'm, every now and then I feel like they were always there and you'd read like through them, but then you knew which ones to skip because you'd be like, okay, there's Dobert, there's whatever. Yeah, the cartoons were shitty. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think I think I like Garfield. I think I always would, if I saw Garfield, I'd be like, all right, I got to read it. Even if I didn't <laughs> think it was funny or didn't get the joke right, or whatever, right. I still enjoyed reading the story, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But yeah, there was a it's lot. Been a while since I thought about it. There's probably a bunch that I can't even remember. To be honest, yeah, I think one thing with Garfield was like you know he was, that was like I didn't know what Abu Dhabi was or where that was. I mean, but then he would always try to send Odie or Nermal. I can't remember who. <laughs> but like he was like he'd send them there and like package oh, yeah. it, you know, which is pretty funny because that place kind of blown up more yeah. in recent years. So like in like '87 when that nothing. guy was talking about sending him to Abu Dhabi, yeah, that was probably jack shit. There, right. So. Yeah, it'd be like oh yeah, those yeah. Sending someone to like Kyrgyzstan or something now, yeah. where you're like, oh, what's there now? Now you you want to get sent to send me to Abu Dhabi, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I just feel like Popeye too, because I want to say when they made this set for this thing, it was in the '80s when Popeye was bigger. I don't even know if I don't I don't know. I don't even remember a Popeye movie, but apparently it was all filmed here and from. This old comic strip that... I mean, how long ago was this Popeye movie made? I want to say this was in the 80s or early 90s when they made Popeye Village in Malta. And side side note, they've also filmed a lot of other stuff here, like uh, I think like Gladiator, maybe Game of Thrones. A lot of ancient set stuff you can film. Yeah, here yeah, yeah. Everything that makes looks sense. so old. Huh. Mm. All right. But yeah. I don't even know if there's still comics around. I haven't. I don't know. I haven't read a newspaper. Like, hey, country boys, assignment. We want you to go out and buy a local <laughs> newspaper, flip it open, <laughs> see, see if there's comics. Yeah, get back to us. <laughs> we don't ever. We can't read. So. What section was it in? Was it, it was its own section? Yeah, I mean, if you had the if your paper was big enough, we I feel like we had our own section, own comics. I mean, that's a Florida thing. It was like they a, just know they make a whole section. <laughs> that, that was all your newspaper. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. they hide like the news one in full there. one full <laughs> strip, whatever the fuck they call it. On the weekend, it was. On the weekend, it would be like it'd be a lot. But yeah, then, like, yeah. Normally, it'd be week. like three or four three, if you're lucky. Oh no, I swear there was four. like a. I thought there was a full page. Maybe I'm misremembering, but I swear there was like a, at least a full page. Like it was on the back of one section. I think on Sundays, but if just your day to day paper, it would. I mean, because you, you can't write a good comic every day. That's why half of them. You're. It was just some bullshit thing of of like. Dilbert yeah, farted no, no. in the office. Okay. <laughs> Dilbert dropped his binder. That's comedy gold. It, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Back uh, when we didn't have the YouTubes and the TikToks. Yeah, that was that was our entertainment. Just <laughs> but imagine, yeah, in the 20s or 30s, you're like, Yeah, right. Oh, I can't wait for the comic to come out. Can't wait for Archie to get me <laughs> to see what's happening. Chuckling. Next Archie and Jughead are <laughs> battling over Betty and Veronica. Is that Dude, it? I did find is that myself. When I, I don't know what it is. It's comforting. I guess when I was home for Thanksgiving, uh, watching like Andy Griffith show in the middle of the night, like passing out to the Andy Griffith show. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Oh, this is nice. <laughs> the simple so, storylines. I think it's just, you know, stuff from like the fifties and sixties, like maybe the world wasn't, Perfect, but like ah, things were simpler. I yeah, fall yeah, yeah. at least within the show. Right, right. You know, oh yeah, right. I used to love all the Nick at Night shows. Oh and, yeah, yeah. yeah. I dream of Genie and all that shit. Yeah. And, uh, I'm trying to think of this. Taxi. Else. Do you yeah. feel like those two shows hold up? I dream of Genie and Tax. I dream of Genie and Taxi hold up. Like they're kind of funny still. Or I like, mean, not not like make you laugh. Yeah, like, they're not of, terrible. There was a lot of moral stories built into a lot of that stuff. I mean, like. The, the Andy Griffith show specifically, I, like it was always some sort. of I mean, I would marry Jeannie at the end of that. You know, I don't I know if I married was, her. I mean, married Jeannie. Yeah, you know, no problems with that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'd have to see if they hold up. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I Andy Griffith. Probably. Yeah. I'm sure they're. I mean, I mean, does Mr. Ed hold up? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe yeah. not Mr. Ed. <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty cutting edge. I forget shit. about that one. <laughs> shit. But I feel like I don't know. Mary Tyler Moore show. It's 
Yeah, that's, it's still that's probably relevant. pretty relatable. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, so yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah about yeah. what was uh, Lucy. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love Lucy. Like it was that. hilarious. Yeah, that's yeah. all about marriage and stuff like that. And yeah. There's a lot and of there's a, there's an actual chemistry between them because they were, they had it. They were a right, right. Yeah. yeah. So there's right. actually the I don't right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All those shows. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Back to Malta. Um, but <laughs> comic strips. Yeah. Comic Popeye. strips. Popeye. Yeah. We um, made our way back. So if you had to pick a favorite one, let's let's just say your your top dog um, strip. I mean, we can go with Garfield. I remember that one. <laughs> yeah. You're more of a Heathcliff guy. Yeah. <laughs> I remember not liking Heathcliff and being like, this is not as funny. My as favorite Garfield. thing with Heathcliff was they had a, uh advertising deal with, no, I guess that was Dennis the Menace. Sorry. Yeah. With Dairy I mean, Queen. It was Dennis the Menace. And I remember seeing on the Blizzard Cups. So I like had that. That's a, yeah, that Dennis sounds kind of Menace. familiar. There was a Dennis the Menace comic strip. So it's yeah, like, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. you know, I don't know. It's something yeah. to think about. That's what I mean. There's probably, a, there's a ton that I think I'm forgetting about, but, but like, what was the most impactful to you? I don't know. I'll say Garfield. <laughs> the comics. I wanted the sports. Garfield. <laughs> okay. Matt, what are you saying? Garfield? Uh, sure. <laughs> Two for Garfield. <laughs> I'll say um, Calvin and Hobbes because that was. Yeah. I like legit. Calvin and Hobbes is classic. I would actually like buy the books and like there's just okay. good stories. Yeah. Good yeah. morals and life lessons yeah. and like quips. And yeah. Learned everything I knew from old Calvin stuff, and Hobbes. Stuffed tiger <laughs> and a wild eyed kid. <laughs> All right. So. That that kind of sums it up. Again, we could we could be here talking about Malta for till next year. We're gonna do a hardcore history on Malta. <laughs> we could be here for years, but just based on this information, what are we thinking? Are we going here? Yeah, I mean, I'm down. I feel like this is a pretty Mediterranean. Easy one. That's not hard to Mediterranean. Pick spot in the Mediterranean. Tons of stuff to see. Seems interesting. Different culturals. Popeye cultures. Village. Popeye, Popeye Village. Village. Yeah. Uh, you go to church every day of the year that you're there. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good to me. I think too, it's, um, it's gotta be, I, I may be wrong with this, but like what country is that far South? It still takes to Europe. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, like that's, so you're going to go in our winter. It's gotta be the warmest place I would think or pretty close. Yeah. In it'll Europe. be in cool, Europe, but you know, I don't not know. Greece is way lower than that. I don't think so. Not the yeah. Best. Isn't it like Italy and then Greece is like down here. Yeah. But so it's like, there's Sicily and then it's below Sicily and then Greece. Maybe there's some islands in Greece that are Close at the same it, but I don't think latitude nothing. or whatever. But anyways, we can look into that. But it's definitely one of the warmer places. If sure. Yeah. Like yeah. one of the top. It's Mediterranean. Oh, yeah. It's got to be beautiful. I mean, I imagine. Yeah, you're pretty close to northern Africa, too, which I mean, it's it's got to be warm or at least mild right. all year round. Maybe hot in the summers, but yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going. I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. I'm down. Yeah, I'm. This was an Boy, easy one. Bad. Well, yeah, let's go. And that's the thing. We didn't even really have to talk about half the stuff here, all the stuff to do. But yeah, this is a, this is a no brainer. So can we take our Falcons there, though? I think so. I okay. think they're probably encouraged. I think there. they like the Falcons, right? Yeah. Take mm -hmm. our Falcons there. Falcons. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have another another unanimous. I would imagine that Champagne and Justin would both go to. I oh, yeah. I see no reason. I'm, so I'm going to speak for them. And what do you think their favorite comic strips are? I could see not a clue. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe maybe Calvin and Hobbes for Justin. Sure. Yeah. I see Shane that. Marmaduke. I, I could see Shane liking Marmaduke. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with we'll go with those. We'll have to ask okay. them separately. Yeah. But look, I feel like for the past I don't know, the past few episodes, we've had some pretty obvious no brainers ones. You know, I unanimous mean, I mean, decisions. It's probably gonna get like that, I think, over the as we get a little no. bit bigger some of these places there's still a lot of uh shit holes. hard nose out there yeah. so i i say next time we go to uh i mean i don't think i've said no to anything have yeah. I? well so. you, <laughs> you haven't no. but you didn't say no <laughs> i don't know did i i think there was one maybe, was one. maybe yeah, you said one I maybe remember, equatorial guinea remember, yeah was it actually, okay I'm and actually this is a good segue because I, I think i think you both might i think equatorial guinea might have been the only all no i can't remember but for our next episode, I say we go to Guinea-Bissau. It's not really close to Ecuador, Guinea. It's in Africa, but kind of a different region of Africa. But it's on the west side. It's on the west coast, but uh, Equatorial Guinea was closer to the equator. Guinea-Bissau is kind of up more by like Senegal, the Gambia. Okay. Ooh, I like the Gambia. I know that was our last episode. <laughs> and I really don't know anything about it, but I it feel like a good one too. Honestly. Yeah, at, the Gambia was a. Uh, we'll go back one day. We'll go our back. episode five. And things have gotten shitty in the Gambia since we did the episode, which is fun. Like, not funny, but it's like some of these places, Ironic, like yeah. Guyana, right? Like, Venezuela wants to attack now. So, like, 
maybe the country boys need to go there before it's not a country. Yeah. I don't know. We need to see if we would go there before someone else goes to it. Maybe, maybe we can exploit the oil. <laughs> yeah. No one's thinking that. So, yeah, I think we do Guinea-Bissau. Bissau. I know nothing about it. Yeah, and I feel like either. we need a wild card country because, look, we've been getting a lot of these softball, easy toss-ups. Sure. sure. We're... Jeff, of can course I remind you go. that you're the one that picks them? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we have a very calculated method of doing this. And look, I, I, I'm just relaying the facts, okay? The fact uh, that we want to uh, go there, that's up to the country. Yeah. <laughs> I, wait to, I want them to invite us. Like, we know you guys talk <laughs> about us. We want you here. Like, thank you, random country. Who's... We'll get sponsored by one of them eventually. Yeah. yeah. All right, so Malta on, <laughs> or like a cheap airline. It'd be sweet. So I mean, fly, airline. fly Malta is going to yeah, sponsor us. Like yeah. our rickety plane. <laughs> it's a bunch of falcons tied together. That, <laughs> it's like a sky chariot. Yeah. It's pretty fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll go back to Africa, Guinea Bissau. Start doing our research now and uh, see if we'll go there. But Malta, easy decision. Of course, easy. we're going to Malta. Of course, we're fucking going. So. Good We're job. Ride Malta. that fucking bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we want to turn too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Matt, you know you want to turn on that bicycle. All right. Well, we'll see you there in, in Africa for our next episode.